go back to this chapter 17, starting with verse 8. And Amalek came and fought against Israel. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us and go out, fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will station myself on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand, which represented the authority of God. And Joshua did as Moses told him and fought against Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up on top of the hill. So it came about when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. When they took a, then, then they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other. Thus his hands were steady until the sun set. So Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Here we see, here we see that both realms working together, simultaneously interacting together. And uh, there's the earth realm, the realm in which we live in right here. Uh, and that's made real to us by our natural senses. I touch things. I see things. Uh, and, and so the earth realm is made real to me through my natural senses. There's also the spirit realm. And the spirit realm is made uh, uh, conscious to me by my spiritual senses. The Bible says that, that we have spiritual eyes and we can discern and understand the things of God. We have spiritual ears to hear. We can hear God speak. We can feel God's presence. So we have spiritual senses just like we have natural senses. And, and so that makes us aware of both realms. We as humans function in both realms. The Bible says that we are uh, created in the image of God, and God is a spirit being, and so are we a spirit being. We have the ability to connect with the uh, spiritual realm. And, and, and so these two realms simultaneously exist together. If we could see into the spirit realm this morning, we see angels in this place. They're on assignment by God. God wants to, to say or do certain things in your life, and so he'll send ministering angels uh, on assignment to bring it about. There's all kinds of angels. There's warring angels. There's ministering angels. And, uh, you know, so uh, there's cherubims and seraphims and all kinds of angels and things going on in the spirit realm that we are not consciously aware of many times, uh, but it's going on. And so Moses and Joshua here are an example of these two realms interacting together. The Bible says that Moses went up on the mountaintop. He started interceding. He has the, the authority, the rod of God. He's standing in position of authority, and he's interceding, dealing with the spiritual realm. Joshua is in the valley with the army, and he's dealing with the earth realm. And what Moses did directly affected what Joshua did. And what Joshua did, you know, and, and what, what Joshua did also affected the spirit realm. And so here it is. It says, what happens in the earth realm directly affects the spirit realm, and what happens in the spirit realm directly affects the earth realm. There are demonic forces. Uh, they're fall, we call them demons. Uh, they're fallen angels. And a third of the angels rebelled against God and, and started warring against God's plans and God's purposes. Now, this happened before the creation of the, uh, of the earth realm that we are experiencing right now. And, and they were cast out of heaven. They were cast into, the Bible talks of three heavens. The first heaven is the earth realm in which we live. The second heaven is the atmosphere above the earth realm. And, and that's where, where a lot of the angels and, and the demons uh, are, are at. And uh, as well as they, they move into the earth realm, they move back, back and forth. And then there's the third heaven the Bible talks about. That's where the throne of God is. And, and that's where he dwells in, in the third heaven. And so there is this interaction. And... Uh, God sends ministering angels. The Bible even says that, that there are angels that minister salvation to humanity. There are angels that are at work and, and ministering to people to bring them to a point of salvation. There are, there are demonic forces up there that are warring against people uh, because the goal of, of the demonic force is John 10, 10, to rob, steal, and to destroy. They don't want you going to heaven. They don't want you to enter into the blessing of the Lord. 
They don't want the word of God to become alive and, and mighty within you. And so they're warring against that from happening. And so whether we like it or not, we are in a warfare. There are good forces and bad forces that are influencing and trying to impact your life. It is up to you to which one has the greatest influence in your life. They can't hold a gun to your head and say, you've got to do what I tell you. You choose. You choose life or death. The Bible says you choose life or death. It is up to you. What do you want? What are you willing to fight for? We're in a war. You're going to have to fight. We call it spiritual warfare. And you're going to have to make up your mind. I, I choose to fight, and I choose to fight for God. I choose to fight for God's will, His plan, and His purpose to be fulfilled in my life. I'm not going to give in to the enemy. I'm going to give him no place in my life. And so we're in this. We're in this warfare. Now, the God is over all of it. And, and the battle is not between God and Satan. Satan is no threat to God at all. I mean, at any time, God could just say, you know what? I'm wiping everything out. And there's times in history when God felt that way. When Noah built the ark, God was fed up with humanity. He said, I've had enough of you guys. There was another time, and, and God said, man, I'm fed up with my people. Abraham said, oh, but God, and he started interceding. There's times when Moses interceded. At any time, God can alter and change things. God knew. When he created the angels, he knew a third of them would, would rebel against him. God knows all things, and yet he created them. God knew when he put Adam and Eve in the garden, he knew they were going to rebel against him. They, he knew they were, going to, they were going to be involved in a crime of treason, and they were going to change sides. They were going to change from his leadership and authority to the devil's leadership and authority. He knew that. He knew that that before the foundations of the earth were even created, he planned for your existence, and he knew that you would be right in the middle of this war zone. It's all part of his plan. There's things that God wants established in us that the war will establish. Don't resist it. Don't be afraid of it. Press into it. Press into the word, and, and, and let, let God work in your life, because is preparing you for your internal ruling and reigning with him. We're learning how to rule and reign with him. It's all part of his process. The Bible says that Satan is the God of this world system. Now the Psalms 94 says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth does not belong to the devil. The earth belongs to God. And creation, what's created on the earth, belongs to God. The devil's coming in, and he's trying to rob, steal, and destroy. He's, he's infiltrated, he's invaded the earth realm to destroy what God has done. But he's put us, he's put the church in the earth realm to counter that and to bring forth his plans and his purposes. 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people will pray, humble themselves and pray, I'll heal the land. 1 John 3, 8 says that Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy them all. Not some, all of them. He went to the cross, and by, by what he accomplished on the cross, provided victory over all the demonic forces in the world today and how they want to influence. I like what it says in Colossians. That he disarmed rulers and authorities and made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through Jesus. He triumphed over them. He made a public display of the, of the destruction and, 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 uh, of the devil through Jesus Christ going to the cross. So let's look at this. We have the, we have the kingdom of God, angels, we have the kingdom of Satan. Demonic realm. And here we are, humans on earth. Ephesians 3, 10 in the Amplified, I like what it says there. It says the responsibility of the church is, is to declare the word of the Lord into the heavens. And when we declare the word of the Lord into the heavens, that activates the angels. 
The angels are waiting for the voice of the Lord. They're waiting for the plans and purposes of God. They know what they are. God's already told the angels what his plans and purposes are. He's waiting for us as humans to get in line with it and declare it as well. And when we declare it, it activates the angels, and, and then they, they affect and make a difference in the earth realm. If my people will humble themselves and pray, if we will get in sync with what God has in plan, and we will declare it. You know, sometimes as Christians, we think, i got to declare it, you know, and i got to run around to all, all the people and declare it. Listen, you know what? Declare it into the heavens. Release it up there. You see, the spirit realm is voice activated. Your voice, speaking the anointed word of the Lord, speaking the plans and purposes of God, your voice impacts the spirit realm. Moses is on the mountaintop as he's interceding and praying. He's declaring into the heavens victory and coming against the enemy. And as he did that, it affected the earth realm where Joshua was. And Joshua won the battle. <laughs> Listen, if we in this country are going to win the battle, the church better take its position. Yeah. I don't care who our politicians are, and I don't care how gifted they are, I don't care how much money they have, if they don't have the favor and the blessing of God, they're in trouble. Amen. We are in trouble. Yeah. Let's bless ourselves and, and declare to the heavens the plans and purposes of God. Amen. Let's get involved in it. The way that God says we should be involved. And let's not let the enemy run roughshod in our nation, in our lives. Next week, I want to focus more on our lives. Let's not let the enemy just run roughshod. Whatever he wants to do, he can do. No. The Word of God says certain things. I declare to stand on the Word and, and declare the Word. I give voice to the Word of God in my life. I give voice to it in the world in which I live. That activates angels. The Bible says there's warring angels that, that are battling in the spirit realm. You know why? Because there's a blessing that God wants to release in the earth realm, but they're being held back. Daniel chapter 10, we'll talk next week about it. How that, that, that the forces of darkness were holding back the plans and purposes of God. God put us in positions of authority on the earth. We need to take and function within our authority now. The spirit realm is voice activated. What you say activates angels, or it will activate the demonic realm. If you have hatred and you voice hatred and towards someone, unforgiveness towards someone, that hate activates the demonic forces to infiltrate your life. And all of a sudden, that unforgiveness, that hatred will gain clout in your life. And it will start to become a stronghold, and it will overwhelm you. And it will start to influence your life in ways you don't want to be influenced. Give no place to it. Give no voice to it. Another key to the spirit realm is, is heart activated. The intent of the heart. It, the intent of your heart and the voice of your mouth stirs the spirit realm for good or evil. Be careful what you say and how you say it. Now, I know there's something, years ago, I know, back in the 1980s, which some of you say, well, that was way back. But I know in the church, you almost were afraid to tell a joke. And if you told a joke, you'd get rebuked. Oh, you're going to be held accountable for every word, and you know, and, and you know, you, you were afraid to say anything. And for sure, don't, don't say anything that might lean towards being negative. Or you'd be rebuked. Remember that? Some of you guys remember that? Sure. There's a lot of humor in the New Testament. God's not against jokes. He's not against comedians. He's not against having fun. And, and some, sometimes I'll say words I don't believe. I'm just having fun with somebody. I'm just picking on them. It's lightly said. But then there's other times when we say things and we mean it. Our heart's in it. How dare you, devil, come to me with that? How dare you try to infiltrate my life? I resist you in the name of Jesus. Get out of here. Second Chronicles chapter 10, verse 3. For we 
Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. In other words, it's not human against human. And, and, and we're into that in our country so much. It's human against human. Ideology against ideology. And, and if you don't agree with what I, how I think things ought to be, then I trash you and I wipe you out and you're worthless. You're no good. And you know what? Come on. We as a nation and as people need to get over that. I don't have to agree with you to love you. I don't have to agree with you to work with you. I'm not warring with humans. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh or of human nature, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Thought fortresses are thought processes. Thought processes rule the world. Thought processes activate the spiritual realm. Thought processes release demonic forces or angels. That's why it's important what we think. And as a church, it's important that we don't war against other churches. The enemy would love to divide us because he knows he can conquer us if we'll be divided. He says, we are destroying speculations, thoughts again, and every lofty thing, every lofty thought that raises up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. We evaluate every thought. How does this fit into the mind of Christ? Is this okay or is it not okay? Is this from God or is it not from God? We need to govern and manage our, our own lives in that way. And as a nation, we need to be sensitive to that as well. I know there's some that want to take in God we trust off of our coins. And they want to take God out of our, our culture and out of our society. But we as a church need to stand up and say, no! We don't believe that's the right thing. We believe that God is very important. We want to trust in God. We choose God over human effort and human understanding. The Bible says that those strongholds they, they will try to infiltrate, and, and that's, how, that's how the demonic realm gets involved in the earth realm, through the thought processes. <coughs> messing with our mind, messing with our emotions. Lies and deception. The Bible says that the devil is a great deceiver. First, first Peter 5, 8, he says uh, he's like a roaring lion. Arr! You know, and he'll come with a loud voice with untruth and try to convince you that it's true. And if, if you let, let his loudness intimidate you, you'll start to cave into it. You'll cower to that loud voice. Don't cower to the loud voice. Stand for truth. Stand for the truth of the Bible and declare the goodness of God and the word of the Lord. The Bible says he's also an accuser. He's always accusing us. He's accusing us before God. He's trying to accuse us before each other. And when we judge each other and accuse each other and trash each other, the devil's running rampant with that. And we need to be wise to that. Say, no, I'm not going to buy into that. I choose to think good. Think well of my brothers and sisters. Even, even those that are not believers, I choose to think well of them. They're created by God. God loves them. I need to have a good attitude towards them. I need to think well of them. So it's the church's responsibility to legislate the law of God. This is the law of God right here, the Bible. This is the law of God. This is what we legislate. The word of the Lord says this. The word of the Lord says that, that God loves all people. We legislate that. We legislate and lose salvation over the whole earth. That's the will and the plan of God that that happened. And so the word legislate means to enact law. This is law right here, the law of life. We, we enact that, and, and we declare it into the heavens. And, and, and because the spirit realm, the spirit realm is belief and declaration activated. Well, we believe the law of God, and we declare the law of God, the heart of intent, with a sincere heart. Yes, this is God. Yes, this is God's plan. And this is God's will. And we release it into the heavens. And as we release it into the heavens, the angels grab it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's the word of the Lord. That's God's will. All right. All right. All right. We, we, we've got our go ahead, angels. Let's go. Woo! Into the earth round by go. Bringing victory. Amen. Now, listen, we're in a war. 
And sometimes you can get battle fatigue. And some people never get battle fatigue. Because they shoot their weapon one time thinking, well, there, I, I shot my weapon. <laughs> I declared the word of the Lord. It's done. No, it's not. Our military goes and they drop thousands and thousands and thousands of bombs. They shoot millions of bullets. Time after time after time. Because the enemy just keeps coming as an onslaught. And so we got to keep resisting and keep coming back. Declaring the word of the Lord. Declaring God's plan and God's will into the heavens. We're in a warfare. And it's not a one-time shot. It becomes a lifestyle. So we, we, we are in this position as the church. And we're pressing God's word against the forces of darkness. And we're, we're releasing God's word for the angels to run with. You see, the problems on the earth are not a big problem for God. They're not a big problem. But God has put us in a position of authority. He says, humans, I delegate the earth to you. What you choose, life or death, is what's going to be on the earth. And a lot of times we don't like that. We just want God to rush in and do whatever, do in his plans and his purposes, and we'll just go along for the ride. God says, no, it's not the way it is. You are in a position of authority. What do you want? He will hold us accountable. <coughs> God is holding the church accountable. You maybe don't like the process. You don't like how God has set this system up. Tough luck. He's not going to change it because you don't like it. We determine. We as the church on the earth today determine how involved God is in the earth realm. We determine that. How well do we resist the enemy and declare the word of the Lord? For what we, we legislate, what we declare from a heart and desire to see God's will and plans fulfilled on the earth, what we declare activates the release of the forces of darkness. The words that we declare create wars in the heavens. And if we can see into the heaven realm, into the spirit realm, if we can see into the spirit realm, we would see angels on assignment. We would see demonic forces also on assignment. And, and what, what's happening on the earth activates and releases them in an authoritative way. When our country says we, we want to take God and God we trust off our coins, we, we, we don't want God involved in, in our political system. When we, as a, when, when we as a humans, you see, even the unbeliever has a great influence in the earth realm. Because the unbeliever, not knowing it, they're deceived. They're good people, but they're deceived. They don't realize that what they're doing activates the demonic realm. And that the demonic realm is activated and loosed to move on the earth in ways that are destructive. To rob, to steal, and to destroy. And sometimes as humans, we get all upset about it. And we come against the humans. But we need to come against the forces of darkness. Yeah. And if we, if we will resist and effectively come against the forces of darkness, the earth realm will be blessed. Here's a couple of scriptures I want to share with you. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59. Verse 15, yes, truth is lacking. And he who turns aside from evil makes himself a prey. Now, the Lord saw it was displeasing in his sight that there was no justice. It was breaking the heart of God that there was no justice. It breaks the heart of God when the devil is allowed to run rampant on the earth. It breaks his heart. He's waiting. For his children, who are empowered with his spirit, have the authority of his word, and are more than overcomers.
other comers. He's waiting for them to stand in their position of authority and release it. Are we stand here in the name of Jesus when we come against you. But so much of the church is fighting against other churches. They are not our enemy. Other people are not our enemy. And the devil loves to deceive and distort and get our focal point off of him because he knows if we stand in our position and release the big guns of God damn it, he's dead meat. So he comes intimidating. Verse 7, it is not to divide, is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house? When you see the naked to cover them and not hide yourself from their flesh. In verse uh, 16, Isaiah 59, 16. And he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no one to intercede. He looked. Where are my people? Where are those spirit-filled, word-empowered people? Where are they? They're out enjoying the blessing of the Lord. They're out enjoying their prosperity. They've stepped away from the position of authority. They stepped away from the war zone, and they're in the pleasure zone. Man, we're having fun. This is a great life. Wow! You know? We got all and God says, you're missing the whole purpose of why I blessed you. You're missing the whole purpose of why I, 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 I released prosperity into your life is so that you can fight a good fight. Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. Fight it. Don't activate your faith just for the blessing, but activate your faith to fulfill the plans and the purposes of God. What does God want for your life? What is God telling you? What role in the battle are you supposed to play? We have so many Christians today. They treat the church like a hospital. I go there when I'm hurting. But once I feel good, I'm gone, man. I don't need the church anymore. I received the blessing of God. I won't hurt anymore. I'm healed. Woo I'm going to go and be a pleasure seeker. Man, the church has, is full of those types of people that think that way. You are set free and you are healed that you can fight. That you can be a part of the process of winning the world for Jesus. Amen. That's why you're blessed. That's why you're saved. Don't lose sight of that. God says, where are my people? The world is being torn up by the forces of darkness. Hell is running rampant. And where are my people? Where are my spirit-filled, empowered, authority-driven people? They're using all of it for self. I'm really spiritual. Look what I've got. Look how life is good for me. God says, no, that's not the intent that I intended. 1 Samuel chapter 12. Verse, verse 20. And Samuel said to the people, do not fear. You have committed all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Yeah, people, you have turned your back on God. You have abandoned God. And you have sought other things. And you, have, you have promoted evil. You've been involved in evil. You've been in, involved in unrighteous lifestyles. And yet God still loves you in spite of all that. And he says, listen, don't run from God, but let's run to God. Now is the time. Let the grace of God abound in your life. And verse 21, and you must not turn aside for when you would, for then you would rather go after futile things which cannot profit or deliver because they are futile. Listen, all of your possessions, all of your money, all, all, all of the, uh, the blessing of God used towards self-exaltation and self-pleasure is futile. 
It's not helping anybody else. You are not on this earth to have a bless me party. You're on this earth to serve the Lord and to bless his kingdom and to bless other people. That's why you're here. Really, folks, the churches ought to be overflowing. If we are doing what God called us to do. But we get caught up in living life to the degree that we say, I don't have time for the church. I don't have time for God. I don't have time to serve God. I am so busy. And your busyness is not building the kingdom or blessing other people with eternal rewards. Doesn't matter how big your kingdom on the earth is. It's few unless it's, it's helping to build the kingdom of God. And just you being a Christian, just you saying, I believe in the Bible, is not building the kingdom of God. You can take the Bible and you can set it on your coffee table. It's the anointed, authoritative word of God. And you can set it right there on the coffee table and bring it in a spot in your house. And it will bless nobody. You can think, well, I've got it, you know, and, and I know the Bible, and I know Jesus, and I'm saved, and, and you can be back in R&R, &R, running from the front lines. This word needs to be legislated, it needs to be enacted. Amen. Sitting on your coffee table is not going to change the world. You think of all the people that have been in your house and sat around your coffee table with your Bible sitting there. How many of them have gotten saved just by looking at your Bible? And sometimes as Christians, we kind of get into this, you know, deceive ourselves. Because fighting is work. The Bible calls it the work of the ministry. If you have the idea that I want to do ministry without work, you're whistling Dixie. Ministry is work. And he goes on, he says, For the Lord will not abandon his people on account of his great name. It's not because of how great we are. It's not because of how much prosperity I have, how many possessions I have, and the great positions on the earth that I have. That's not why God is being gracious to his people. But God is gracious to his people because he is God. Because he loves his people. He's got a wonderful plan for his people. And he wants to get you connected to his plan. Because his plan is not just about what happens on the earth. His plan for your life is what's going to happen in eternity. Amen. And so he's looking at the big picture. And he's saying, Timothy, if you'll follow, if you'll follow my plan for your life, I'm preparing you and equipping you for a wonderful, eternal existence in heaven. But if you get caught up in the things of the world, you just want to run around and play with horses and, and, and build your own little kingdom and create this name and reputation on the earth for yourself, you can do that and you'll make heaven, but your rewards will be burned. You, you will be saved, but that's it. I choose to go for the gold. I choose to serve the Lord. For me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And he goes on and he says, verse 23, moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. But I will instruct you in the good and in the right way. The prophet Samuel was saying, I have a responsibility here. You guys have become a wicked and a sinful group. But God loves you. And God is pouring out his heart to you. And he has sent me to you to love on you. And to instruct you. And to, and to encourage you to serve him. And I'm praying for you. It is God's plan for me to pray for other people. Pray for the unbeliever. To pray. I say, oh God. Oh God. I pray salvation over those people. I pray salvation over my friend. Father, I want to see you in your kingdom. That's the heart of God. The heart of God is not for you just to have fun with your friend. It's for you to pray for your friend. If they're an unbeliever, Lord, I, ch I choose.
to bless them, minister, and pray and declare salvation over them, activates the angels. The angels are activated and released in a way that they weren't before. Ministering angels and minister salvation. You know, I'm involved in that. I'm involved in people getting saved. As I pray over them and, and believe, I'm involved. I'm standing on the front lines. Yes, yes, go God. Go angels. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> and I'm in my position. Authority. In the world that God has placed me in, in central Nebraska, I'm in my position. And I'm in the front lines. I'm activated. <laughs> I'm declaring and blessing central Nebraska. The plans and the purposes of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. It's a good life. <laughs> Amen. It's a good life. Don't miss it. The fight of faith is a good fight. Oh, there's times of struggle and times of difficulty. But you'll be in heaven looking back and saying, Hey, you know, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I remember when I was in kindergarten. Beating my pants. <laughs> teachers, teachers read the story to us, and we're all sitting on the floor, and pretty soon I got a puddle by me. Oh, was that embarrassing. I just, I thought my whole world was over. My life was over. I mean, I, I, I just did something that I'll have to live with my whole life. Oh, baloney. <laughs> it ain't affecting me one bit. I look back and I laugh at it. <laughs> well, that's my other... Not teammates. Classmates, that's it. Because about every one of them did the same thing at one time. I couldn't believe how many people, how many kids wet their pants in kindergarten that year. Couldn't believe it. Go team. Go team. <laughs> <laughs> We're all together in this. Amen. <laughs> but I look back at that now and I say, oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. No big deal. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go do something in life. And I think we're going to be in heaven someday. And we're going to look back. Oh, yeah, I remember. I lost everything I had. I had this certain health issue. Man, the enemy hit me this way, hit me that way. Man, I stood my ground. I declared the word of the Lord. And, and I wouldn't give me in. And I thought, you know, whether I live or die, I'm God's. And you know, it really wasn't that bad. It seemed big back then. But now, looking back at it from heaven's perspective and heaven's view, it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. Not only that. God did some things in my life during that period of time that have transformed me. And the transformation has blessed, will bless me throughout all eternity. Amen. Keep the big view. Don't narrow yourself down to just the earth around. And to the now. But see your life as God sees it. Through all eternity. He's preparing you. Yeah, he knows the devil's attack. You know, the devil knew before the foundations of the earth were created that you're going to be here for such a time as this, and when you're here, this is going to happen to you. The devil knew it. I mean, God knew it. God knew it. And yet, he said, it's okay, Tim. I'm with you. You're going to make it, and what's going to happen in you is more important than what's happening around you. Got to see it from his perspective. Well, that's enough. Let's stand together. If our musicians would come. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus in your life, receive him today. And if you'll come forward, we have people up here that will pray with you. We have people here in the front rows that will pray for you. And if you're here today, I encourage you to step into the front lines. <laughs> Get in the fight. Don't be afraid of what the war zone is all about. Be excited. It's a good fight. The 
fight of faith. Paul says, man, it's a good fight. I enjoy the fight of faith. The faith fight. Man, it, it's good. I've, he said, I've learned it, you know, how to be content in whatever situation I'm in. I've been in prison. I've been beat up. I've been left for dead. I've been ridiculed and mocked. Even by Christians. You know, the church rose up at a time that when the church rose up and just trashed Paul. The Apostle Paul just trashed him. I'm not going to let it blow me out of the water. I'm not going to let it move me from my position that God's put me in on planet Earth. This is my fighting position right here. This is where God wants me to be. I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay steady. Steady. You see, God's plan was to create loving and loyal warriors, fighters that were loving and loyal to Him. God wants to work out love in your life, the capacity to love even the unlovely, the, the capacity to love those that really trash you and hurt you, the capacity to love the ungodly, He wants that work into your life. And he wants loyalty in your life. Loyalty to him in spite of whatever happens on the earth. So I, I, let's just think on this for a, a little bit before we leave today. I want us just to think and let the Spirit of God kind of speak to you as our worship team leads us in this song. and Just kind of think on it. Say, well, Lord, here's where I really sense the Holy Spirit stirring in me. Don't just let it be stirred and ignore it. Let it be stirred and let it respond to it. Say, okay, God. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. You're tweaking my life a little bit. And it's good. Amen. He tweaks good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.